Shalom, precious saints. Shalom. Shalom, saints. Shalom, shalom on this wonderful Monday. I'm your host, Sister Dalila dos Santos, here to deliver the word of our Lord Jesus without compromise. I invite you all to hide under the shadow of the Almighty and seek refuge. Shalom, Sister Beth. How are you and how was your Passover holiday? How are you doing? I know some of you are off from work today as well because it's the holiday. Sister Myrna, shalom. Praise 365, shalom, beloved. Hey, twin, greetings. Sister Amuti, shalom. Shalom, brother, just King, King J. Shalom, 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 sister Portia Slick. Shalom, shalom, Mrs. Daka. Shalom, Sister Titi Toure, Brother Leo, Base Guy. Shalom, Brother Kieran, shalom. Good morning, my sister. <coughs> sister Tia, shalom. Shalom, shalom, Lax. Sister Vivi, shalom. Sister Christina, shalom. Shalom, precious saints. Shalom, Mikolo Oficial. Shalom, Sister Shayan. Ewan, shalom, Sister Zara, shalom, Sister G. Collins, shalom, good morning, Sister Jacqueline Bogle, shalom, precious sister, shalom, S. Bodumeli, shalom, 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 precious saints, Nath Trezor, shalom, my sister, shalom, Sister Tasha, Shalom, Sister Kita, Brother Andrew, Shalom, greetings, Sister Bimbola Akanu, Shalom, I am Iris, Shalom, precious sister, Brother Walid, Shalom, 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 Playboy, Shalom, Nial Sinclair, Shalom, Brother Kasai, welcome back, I'm happy to see you, Andrea Borg, Shalom, precious Lily, shalom, sister, shalom, 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 sister Roxy, I'm happy to see you. Sister China and two, shalom, precious sister Irma Tanya Bondia. Boa tarde, aliás, para nós, brother Kieran Devlin, shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, precious saints, shalom, as you all join in. And the title for this live stream is Breaking Online Demonic Marriages. Oh, yes, we are going to dive deep into the online agreements, evil agreements that people are establishing every day through dating websites and other webs websites of that sort. <clears throat> There is a lot that God is speaking concerning that and there is a lot to break as well so that you can be free in Christ Jesus. And I want to also give you good news, saints. On when it's time for us to pray, we are going to be consecrating this month of April unto the Lord. Today is the first day of the month and we need to dedicate the month unto the Lord. Hey, Brother Anthony Gray. Welcome, Brother Anthony Gray. 937 is Sister Lori's husband. Glory be to God. Happy Passover, Sister Gitana. God bless you. Sister Shimura Chanel. Shalom, shalom, Brother Caden. Shalom, precious brother. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Sister Annie, shalom. So saints... Get your Bibles ready, pen and paper, to write down the scriptures. And remember, today we are going to be breaking online demonic marriages. Oh, yes. That is why some of you are afflicted at night and you don't understand because of your participation in these online dating sites and the kind of agreements that you establish by participating in some, some of these websites. And not only that, some of you that have shared your nudes online, on, on any app, on any DM platform, those are agreements. When you send your body, pictures of your body, all right, it is very serious. You are establishing demonic agreements via internet. And the devil doesn't care if you did it through an app. He doesn't care if you send a message or WhatsApp or Instagram. The minute you send and receive, you have now established a 
demonic covenant, a marriage that the Lord is not happy. Because some of us believers, Christian people, are so-called the people of God. Although we know God, we engage in such activities, not knowing that we are as that you are establishing a agreement with the demonic world. Okay? And when I say we, I say the body of Christ. Okay? It is something common. I'm not particularly picking me out of it or you. I'm saying we, the body of Christ. These are things that in church we don't discuss. Your pastor will not speak to you about. It's very rare to find a pastor or a woman of God or man of God that will explain to you the implications of engaging in such acts online. And he won't explain either to you through the lens of the scripture that you are bringing into your life abominations that the Lord will be far from you. He will not hear your prayer. He will not be merciful. Okay? That is why some of you, you can't pray. And when you pray, you are not efficient. When you are, when you are seeking God, God is nowhere to be found. Because simply, your life is bound. You are under this demonic marriage, demonic covenant. And it's important that today it is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. So precious saints, let us pray to consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. Continue to share the... Continue to share the life with those that you think that will benefit from knowing the truth. Become an evangelist for God. You never know who you can send the, the life and will repent and come to the knowledge of Christ and into repentance and be born again. All right, saints, let us all pray and consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. Abba Father, King of glory, we thank you for your wonderful presence today lord god we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for the gift of salvation we thank you for preserving our lives throughout the night lord god for waking us up this morning alive and well father lord thank you for choosing us to have divine revelation to have knowledge father lord of the gift of salvation to know you to have relationship and fellowship with you lord god Father Lord, as we honor you, as we bless your holy and precious name, we ask you for total forgiveness of our sins, transgressions, and iniquities, Almighty God, up to 50 generations before us. Teach us, Almighty God, how to walk upright in righteousness, in holiness, Lord God, without breaking the commandments, Lord God, understanding the implications, Father Lord, of sin, Father Lord, of rebellion against you, Almighty God. And Father Lord, as we bow down before your presence, as we prostrate before your holy throne, Lord God, we cry out for mercy, we cry out for forgiveness, as we repent of our iniquities, as we repent from our transgressions, as we, Father Lord, decide to turn away from our wicked ways, Lord God, have mercy, Almighty God, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With the precious blood of your son, Yeshua, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot fully repent and come, Father Lord, into realization that what we are doing is wrong. We need the Holy Spirit. We need your presence more than ever. We need to rely on you more than ever. Father Lord, especially around this time where there is a solar eclipse eclipse, Lord God, that is an indication that you are judging, oh Father Lord, the earth, you are judging nations, Lord God, and people are still sleeping, because before destruction comes a warning, Lord God, before destruction, Father Lord, comes a warning, Lord God, and this is a warning to all of us, but some of us, Lord God, we are sleeping, we are blinded by, by iniquity, blinded and, dis and, and distracted by stupidity, Lord God, and we cannot understand that the clock of, of, of eternal life is clicking. Oh, Father Lord, you are coming back and you are not coming back, Father Lord, for a corrupted bride, a dirty bride, a filthy bride, but you are coming for the righteous blood. 
for the righteous bride, washed and cleansed by your blood, justified, purified, sanctified by your blood. Almighty God, as we consecrate this live stream into your hands, Father Lord, come into our midst. Father Lord, find expression in our midst. Take possession of the live stream. Take possession of our hearts, our souls, our spirits, our bodies, and all the aspects of our life, Almighty God. Manifest your presence. Manifest your power. Manifest your anointing that breaks yokes. Send forth the Holy Ghost to convince those whom you are calling now as we begin this live stream to know the truth that sets us free. Let the Holy Spirit begin to bring men and women unto repentance. Let the Holy Spirit call forth those, Father Lord, that are at risk of perishing and not inherit everlasting life because of their sinful nature. And as for us, Lord God, search our hearts, search the inner chambers of our hearts, our souls and spirits. And if there is any iniquity in us, Lord God, convince us of our sins so that we can be in time to repent, Lord God, to ask for forgiveness, Lord God, to make things right with you, Lord God. Continue to bind principalities, rulers of darkness, wicked and demonic spirits that are seeking to steal, kill, destroy, cause confusion in our midst, divert the saints, Father. The Lord from your presence. Oh, Father Lord, I'm asking you, bind them with everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire and cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever. Never to exercise any control, dominion, authority, and sovereignty over us. The live stream, Father Lord, and all the affairs of the live stream. In the mighty name of Jesus, I drench and I saturate our environments and the live stream, Lord God, with your precious blood. I envelope each one of us here. In your precious blood, Lord God, I envelope every one of us in your precious blood, Lord God. I call upon the power, Father Lord, that is in the name of Jesus to break yokes. I call upon the power that is in the name of Jesus to bring men into repentance. And if there is any agent of darkness in this live stream seeking to cause confusion, division, distractions, and whatever it is, our Father Lord, I pray that you will bind them also with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire, that you will burn them with the fire of the Holy Ghost and that you will evict them of this platform. Father Lord, never to have access to the affairs of this ministration and our lives. And if there is any arrow that has been sent against us in this live stream, we command it in the mighty name of Jesus to return to sender by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, use me as one of your many vessels today, Lord God, to speak your word so that deliverance can take place, healing, restoration, but above all, so that repentance can take place so that people can become born again, Lord God, and have fellowship with you. And Father Lord, deal with your bride today, Lord God, because some of us, we sometimes think it's only the other ones that have not accepted you and confessed you as Christ Jesus that needs to do the repentance. But we need to do the repentance every day, Lord God. So deal with us today. Deal with our hearts, our souls. Deal with our spirits, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, get your Bibles ready. Pen and paper, because I advise you to write down the scriptures, even if you may, perhaps God gives you an opportunity to witness the words to somebody. It is good to be prepared. Because on these last days, people want biblical evidence. They don't want our opinions. They want to know whether what we are saying, it's written in the word of God. And it's fair and just that they do want proof from the Bible. Because we live and at a time where the world is filled with false prophets, with doctrines of men and not the Bible and the word of God. So write down so that if you are confronted in a situation where you need to present proof, you will not you will not be caught lacking or without the word of God. All right, at hand. Let us go to the book of Ezra, chapter ten, from verse one to seventeen. Today I have time, saints, and I will be be able to minister for at least uh, fifteen days without any restrictions in regards to time. So please don't don't complain that is too long or don't be tired. You know, it is going to be worse than hell. All right. You will have plenty of time burning in the fire of the pit of hell. So it is rather we read the word of God. All right. Ezra 10 from verse 1 to 17. Sending away foreign wives. 
while Ezra prayed and confessed, weeping and falling face down before the house of God. An extremely large assembly of Israelite men, women and children gathered around him. The people also wept bitterly. Then Shechaniah, son of Jehiel, and an Elamite responded to Ezra, We have been unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women from the surrounding peoples, but there is still hope for Israel in spite of this. Let us therefore make a covenant before our God to send away all the foreign wives and their children, according to the counsel of my Lord and of those who tremble at the command of our God. Let it be done according to the law. Get up, for this matter is your responsibility. And we support you. Be strong and take action. Then Ezra got up and made the leading priests, Levites, and all Israel take an oath to do what has been said. So they took the oath. Ezra then went, to the, went from the house of God and walked to the chamber of Jehohanan, son of Eliashib, where he spent the night. He did not eat food or drink water because he was mourning over the unfaithfulness of the exiles. They circulated a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem that all the exiles should gather at Jerusalem. Whoever did not come within three days would forfeit all his possessions according to the decision of the leaders and elders and would be excluded from the assembly of the exiles. So all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered in Jerusalem within three days on the 20th day of the ninth month all the people sat in the square at the house of God, trembling because of this matter and because of the heavy rain. Then Ezra, the priest, stood up and said to them, You have been unfaithful by marrying foreign women, adding to Israel's guilt. Therefore, make a confession to Yahweh, the God of your, of your fathers, and do his will. Separate yourselves from the surrounding peoples and your foreign wives. Then all the assembly responded with a loud voice, Yes, we will do as you say. But there are many people, and it is the rainy season. We don't have the stamina to stay out in the open. This isn't something that can be done in a day or two, for we have rebelled terribly in this matter. Let our leaders represent the entire assembly. Then let all those in our towns who have married foreign women come at the appointed times together with the elders and judges of each town in order to avert the fierce anger of our God concerning this matter. Only Jonathan, son of Asahel, and Jaziah, son of Tikva, oppose this, with Meshulam and Shabbatai, the Levite, supporting them. The exiles did what had been proposed. Ezra the priest selected men who were family leaders, all identified by name, to represent the ancestral houses. They conv convened on the first day of the tenth month to investigate the matter. And by first day of the first month, they had dealt with all the men who had married foreign women. Beloved saints, every time Israel rebelled against God, they went into exile. And God had granted favor to the Israelites, he felt their pain and appointed Ezra as a prophet. Well, Ezra was more of a scribe than he was a prophet because he compiled the law of God to reteach the exiles about the commandments of God. They were so far gone. They were so far gone in their immorality, in their idolatry, in their filth, that they have forgotten the word of God. And they needed a scribe, a man of God like Ezra, to remind them of the covenant their forefathers, their ancestors had with Yahweh. And to also tell them that they were in rebellion against God. They were in idolatry against God. Oh, but Sister Dalila don't understand how is this related to the title today breaking online demonic marriages i'm here to say that saints every time you as a woman of god or man of god you engage in any acts whether physical acts of immorality or online acts of immorality what you are doing before god you are marrying a foreign wife 
or a foreign husband because those people are not believers like you. There are people that have their gods. They worship the devil. They worship deities. They practice witchcraft majority, majority of them. They are idolaters. And by you uh, mingling with them, you mixing yourself with them, whether physically or online. But today I am talking about online. There are many of you here that have an application on your phone, an app. That is a dating app. Some of you, you have not just one, but you have multiple apps. And on these apps, you meet people and you begin to engage in corrupted conversation with them. You begin to, you know, arrange to meet them. Some of you don't get to meet all of them uh, physically, but you send your nakedness to them, you send pictures, you, you begin to entertain conversations with them online that are demonic and diabolical. And what you don't understand is that just the fact, just because you send your nakedness online, that is an agreement. Because what do people do when they having physical intimacy? They strip themselves naked so that the other person can see them and vice versa. And some of you are thinking that just because it's online, just because it's been done on a certain app or on a certain Instagram messaging application or any on social media, that you are not guilty of being in a relationship. You are not guilty of of the idolatry, that you are not guilty of entering into a covenant with those people. Everything is covenant, even friendship. Do you know that? Before God, if you call somebody your friend and you tell the person you are my good friend and the other person calls you friend, that right, there is a covenant. Because how can two walk together unless they agree? It's an agreement. Let me bring you back to the Bible. Jonathan and David, they were friends, right? And the Bible says that they had a covenant because of their the nature of their friendship. They promised to, to, to have each other's backs. Isn't it? They promised. They made a promise. Some of you, you tell your friends, don't worry, I got you. Don't worry, I got you, friend. Don't, you have nothing to fear, friend. I got your back. That is an agreement. And some of you don't understand that the Bible, just because the Bible is not using a language that is, um, you know, like um, the, the jargon that we use now, it doesn't mean that it's not in the Bible, that that is an agreement. The Bible says it is an agreement. All right. You agree to have your friends back and, and vice versa. Your friends got your back. But some of you here, God is not happy with you. And God has sent me here just like I he sent Ezra to the Israelites to tell you that you, the people of God, you are in idolatry against him. You have married foreign wives and foreign husbands online. You are on online platforms sharing your, your, your nakedness, sharing everything that you shouldn't be sharing with somebody unless you are married to them. And you can only make marry somebody that worships the same God than you. Oh yes. If you have married already, you, there is nothing you can do. God is not going to say divorce your husband or wife because they are not, they are not believers. You marry them in ignorance because you didn't know that, that, that you have to choose somebody that is a believer to marry. Fair enough. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about you that are, you are in Israelite. You have been purchased by the blood of the lamb on the cross of Calvary. God washed away your sins, your iniquities. He re redeemed you. But now you are out there looking to marry foreign wives, looking to marry foreign husbands. Some of you, you don't even have one or two online husbands and wives. You have multiple. You are in different relationships online. The, at the end of the day, you begin to message this one. I say, how was your day? And you begin to share things that only a husband and a wife share. I don't care, but Sister Dalila, I have not signed any paper. I have not signed any agreement with, with, with the authority in my country. Listen, the, the Bible keeps telling us about covenants. Those days, they didn't have no, 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 no register to go and sign their names. The ag agreement was made when what? When two people met. The Bible says that if you have intimacy with somebody, if you engage in any sensual relationship, okay, with a person, you have married them. The Bible says that if you join your body even with a prostitute, you are one with them. Whomsoever you join in, in sensual relationship with, 
You are, you are married to them. You are bound to them. But the devil is so cunning that he knows that some of you cannot physically go to certain locations. Some of you are shy. Some of you, because you are a believer, you cannot sin publicly. So you are using the online platforms to do so. And worse, God was telling me that some of you are even married, but you are going on these platforms seeking for companions, seeking for a woman, seeking for a man online. And some of you are even sharing more of your intimate desires, things that are, that are in your heart, more than you share it with your husband, with your wife. And this is happening in the body of Christ and God is not pleased with it. And Ezra had that revelation from God and he immediately went into intercession for his people. He began to pray. He began to seek the face of the Lord. Lord, your people are in idolatry against you. Your people have gone further and they are so far gone in their idolatry. They are so far gone in their immorality. They don't know they left to the right. They are lost. And, and, and Ezra was asking God to give them a second chance. Ezra was asking God for a solution to this problem. Some of you, you are sitting down, Sister Dalila, I don't have just just only one application. I have different ones. I, I email, I DM people online. I send pictures. I am sending pictures of my, 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 my private parts I'm, and I'm receiving them. Oh yes, that is an agreement right there. And the devil is taking your reproductive gates and is taking your finances, is taking your health, is taking everything because of the demonic agreements you are establishing online. Sister Dalila, you are going too far. This is not in the Bible. Do you know that when you go, for instance, I'm going to give you an example now. How many of these um, online um, apps, applications that you have that you can hire certain people? I'm not going to mention their name because my husband was telling me the other day, stop telling th saying things, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And he's right. But how many people go online to look for certain um, businesses that supply men and women to come even to your house. You pay them a certain fee and they come and do things to you. When you take your credit card, yes, Sister Lori, thank you. When you take your credit card and you pay for these services, whether to watch them in corn, whether because you want them to come to your house or to go to a certain location, when the minute you pay for this service, you've already entered into an agreement with Satan and his kingdom. Then some of you are complaining now of a certain infirmity, a certain disease that is afflicting you. You are complaining because your finances are not in place. You are complaining because you have no peace anymore. And you don't understand that yet for as long as you are a person that is a sponsor of the kingdom of darkness, for as long as you are in a covenant with Satan through his economies, through his economical system, social system whatever it is that is set up in place and you are a part of it you are counted as one of the many that are supporting that system you will never know god you will never have peace because people now think that because they identify as believers that is a ticket to go to heaven they think that because they go to church once in a week that that is a passport that will allow them to go to heaven i'm here to burst your bubble those are just rituals that you do but you have no relationship with God. You have no part with God and neither you have part with his kingdom. If you want to be upset, that is your problem. I'm here to bro blow the trumpet to tell you what is going on. So the people of Israel were in trouble. They had married foreign wives and these foreign wives were not worshippers of Elohim. They were not worshippers of the true and living God. How many of you, you have different people online that you receive things from them. You all, you go on certain platforms, something, something fans, and you follow them. You watch at their at at filthiness and their nakedness every day. And you don't understand that you are married to them. 
You watch a certain corn film. You are married to them in the spirit. You are bounded to them in the spirit. Oh, but sister Dalila, I have not committed the physical act. Just because you watched, you entered into an agreement with demons. You've entered into an agreement with a spiritual spouse and wife. And every day you log in, every day you send and receive messages, pictures, or download things. You are establishing more and more demonic online marriages and agreements. It is the truth. Don't shoot the messenger. Take it to God. It's in his word. And those days, these men were actually married and the, the proof of their sin was there. They couldn't hide it. But the proof of your sin is online. You have five to six wives that you are married to. Some of you go up to the thousands because every day you download a new film or you watch a new corn film so there is actors every day and you are not only in a in, in an agreement with the women that are in, the, in in those videos and or films but you are now in covenant with the man that you watch doing the perversion as well and some of you you are thinking that because everything was is online you didn't physically go there with your body that you are not guilty but what Jesus said you don't have to commit the physical act if you thought it in your mind we can sin with our actions but we can sin with our minds with our thoughts you can sin you can sin with your words because while you are watching and enjoying, you are say, 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 saying certain things and you are also doing certain things to yourself that among here adults, I don't have to go into detail. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you, the women even have tools, toys, and you are using these online things, some of you to make a living. You are not just somebody that is there as uh, watching consuming but you are a part of it because that is how you earn your living that is why how you make a side back that is how you support yourself ah, but sister dalila only god knows how much i love him only god knows that i'm faith i, I love him so much Lo listen you can love jesus but if you don't obey him how are you proving that love to him oh yes if somebody tells you that they love you, but they don't respect you, they don't honor you, they don't listen to you, they don't take time to know you, they don't spend time with you, they don't give you things, they don't help you with anything. Uh, what kind of love is that? That is not love. That is lip service. I don't know how many of you here are now the Holy Spirit is telling you to go and, and, and delete certain apps. The message is touching your heart because that is your life. That is how you are living your life. Some of you, oh, but sister Dalila, I, I don't have any applications. I just have friends and we share things. It is the same. You are more comfortable in sharing your intimacy, your pictures, or in, including you single people. I'm not just, just here talking about married people. Single people as well. You have multiple boyfriends and girlfriends, but they're all online. And you are sending pictures of your private areas to these people. When they see you online, they know how you look like in, in, in your privacy. They know everything about you. And you don't understand that you are in covenant with them. But today is a new day. God is calling you to break these covenants. God is calling you to break these covenants. Some of you, because you are married... You said, Lord, I have not physically done anything against my wife and my husband. I'm just sharing my pictures. I'm just sharing my pictures. I'm not doing anything bad. Some of you, you were young, you were a teenager, and you are sharing these pictures. How many people, how many young people, the pictures were made available online? Somebody we leaked the picture online or the videos or whatever it was and that young person did something i'm not gonna say it here but you know what i'm talking about because they couldn't live with the shame how many young people we see this every day and you don't understand that that is a covenant 
When you send these things, it's a covenant. And I don't care how some of you say, oh, but Sister Dalila, I just watch a certain program and this, this and that. Do you know that sometimes even you, by you listening to certain things that are filthy, certain type of music, okay, you are entering into an agreement because you are receiving and you are not rejecting it. You are comfortably accepting that impartation into your life. You see, the devil is very cunning. He knows how to lure everyone into sin. He knows how to approach believers and he knows how to approach unbelievers. But today God is dealing with you, the so-called Christian people, faithful people of Jesus. God is dealing with you. God is dealing with his bride. His bride is flirting with the world. Some of you, you are flirting with the, wor with the world. You take sneak peek peeks at the at the programs. God has told you, don't watch this program. I don't want you to enter into an agreement with any spirit of nakedness, but you are watching it. And sometimes you just say, Lord, I'm just going to watch five minutes to see what's going on. You enter into an agreement. Some of you to prove to you that you are in an, into an agreement. When you go to bed at night, you dream with them doing things that are, are no good. That is a proof that proof to you that in the spirit there has been an agreement already established. Whether you like it or not, the devil doesn't need your permission, your approval. He just needs for you to engage into something and that's it. The covenant is signed, sealed and will be delivered. That is a promise to you. And some of you, you don't know that you are wa walking towards a pit. That will bring about your demise. So I saw a lady that was, she was in the business of Estort. Yes, business of Estort. And somebody booked her and to go to a certain hotel. And she went there and the minute she went there, that man, instead of using her services and paying her and alive her. And the family was crying, oh, you should have never done that to our family member. You should have never done that to her, this, this, and the that. But they don't understand that the person, the lady, put herself into that position. When you give your life to the devil, when you begin to serve the devil and the kingdom of darkness, you are at the mercy of the devil. And we all know that the devil is not merciful. We all know that the devil does not care. All he needs is souls. So some of you, even today, God is telling, giving you a warning. A very stern warning that is either you change and break these online demonic marriages and agreements. Or else it will be the end for you. The Bible always tells us that every time we disobey God, we sin against God. We commit what? Adultery against him. That is the Bible. God compare God. We are his bride. Israel is his bride. So today we are the redeemed of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus washes. us. So when we engage in such acts, we are committing adultery against the living God. We are spitting at the name of Jesus and we are running onto the kingdom of darkness to serve the kingdom of God, darkness, to be under the kingdom of darkness. It is as simple as that. The devil has created a sophisticated online system that people will see just using those, uh, uh, what you call binoculars, or oculus, they call it. It brings everything into a reality dimension. And let me tell you something. Some of you are entering into demonic agreements and marriages via certain games. In a certain game, you have a relationship with a person. You visit them in the game. You exchange money, transact things. It is happening now, saints. Even to little children. There is a role play in a popular game that children play called blocks, something blocks. And in that game, 
Some children can be the father. Some children can be the mother. They have children. And there was another one that was an HD uh, program, a uh, uh, game, um, intelligence, artificial intelligence, where children went and created families and interacted with other people and married there in the game. How many of these children married in, in, in these games? Some, something called Sphinx. Do you remember? That the characters look like people, you could customize them and they will look just like a person. People had families, children, they could marry in those games. Those are agreements. Yes, brother, brother Tyrone. Thank you for, for reminding me. Because I'm not allowed to say things, you know, so I'm just, the brothers and sisters are helping me here. But both this game simps. And the other game blocks. People can get married. People can have families. People establish friendships. Then you could be a friend with a person that is a, a criminal. A person that is a, a high ranking witch and wizard and warlock. And you are making covenants with them online. So you have some of you need to watch your children as well. They call it play role. Play, play role. These are agreements. You are establishing agreements. There is another popular game that you guys have as well. Very popular. Where they have skins. So today you can be these skins. Tomorrow you can be another skin. And you can be a character. Even there is a character that there is the devil. And by you purchasing that app, something night. F night. By you purchasing certain skins, purchasing certain things, you are entering into an agreement with the character because you in the game, you become the character. You become that. Oh, we're going to go dive deep because God is taking, taking us into a lot of repentance. And then by you buying that skin, Buying that game, you without you understanding, you've already stepped into an agreement with the company. With, and who, who, who designs these things? Do you think it's God? Listen, yesterday I had to do my own repenting. God said to me, Dalila, how can you spend so much? You spend your time watching the news. You're spending so much time watching this crime. Because me, when I leave here the live stream, I immediately go into my cr crime crime channel to watch the, the next episode, the next ep episode. And God said, you shouldn't be spending time with these things. You should be spending time more within my presence, watching um, 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 sermons, investigating things, watching things. And God was dealing with me. And I was unhappy because I said, but Lord, you know, I already don't do too much things. I don't play games. I don't have anything. In All I do is this little crime channel and I watch the, the, the crime channel and the news. So now, now I'm going to have to limit that as well and watch a, a, a little bit. And God said, yes, because everything that it, it takes your time more than, than the God is, is an idol. And me, I had to repent. I said, Lord, forgive me today. I, I, I said, Lord, when I leave the live stream, I'm going to go and watch something Christian. I'm not going to be entertaining myself with, with, with all this crime, crime channel that I'm enter, entertaining myself with. Because it's, it, it's true, it's an addiction. Because once I leave the live stream, I'm watching and what happened? Hey, is it the husband that did it? Or is it the wife? And, 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 and God is not happy. God is not happy. God wants us to spend time in the things that are good. That you are learned, you are in his presence constantly. Nigerian moving sister Janet is true, especially the old ones are very ad highly addictive. God had to deal with me because of that. African people know, not the youth for us is, is, is very important. Especially those old movies about witches and wizards and warlocks. And in the village, especially us in the diaspora, it is how we, 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 we stay connected to our, our, our identity. Because we in the, in, in, in the Western world. So when we see them in the them elders in the village, and we remind, takes us back to when we were children. 
and back home. It reminds us of our grandparents. But guess what? As if it's taking more of your time. First 48, yes, Sister Wendy, that is my problem. And all other crime series is about crime. And God was dealing with me. No, this is not right. So you don't understand that the reason why the, the devil has designed entertainment and games and movies and all these different things is to keep our minds away from God, to keep us occupied with the things of this world. Me, for instance, God dealt with me a long time because I was like Brother Andrew, always watching. Hmm. Some of you don't know the names of the act actors. Canayo, Canayo, about ritualists, or cult people. I used to be into that. But God has dealt with me that, look, you're going to have to put a stop. Gonna, it's not that you're, I'm not going to watch it. It's that God is telling there is more that I need to, we need to spend more time in his presence than in this. This is entertainment. When you are watching, you are being entertained. You are not learning anything. You are not fellowshipping with God. You are not in the presence of God. Your mind is captured. It's taken somewhere to another dimension to be entertained. So I'm here to say that since we are all guilty, I put my hands up. God was dealing with me. Another thing that God was dealing with me, you know, like we Christian ladies, we will be going on Amazon to check things, to decorate the house. And then we will swap to another channel of things for the house and, and clothing for the children. And we'll be scrolling and scrolling, and adding things onto the basket. God says you shouldn't spend time doing that. God was dealing with me and I wasn't happy. I came and I, I, I said, Lord, this is not right because look, I don't do anything else. I don't go out. I don't, and you know, I, 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 what else needs to go, go God. But now imagine you that have these applications where you are actually meeting people to go on dates and you don't stop there. You are going to end up booking a certain hotel to do something, something hunky panky with that person there in that hotel. It is very serious. Some of you, you have these apps. And it's not that you are meeting them somewhere, but you are on the, on the something fans. You watch all the filthiness, all the nakedness and everything that they're feeding you with. You watch it online. And then you log out and sign out of the website so that your significant half is not gone. But God is watching you. You are first married to God. You are, Jesus, you are first married to Jesus and you are committing adultery against Jesus, number one. Don't worry about your spouse. They have their own repenti repenting to do. But what about you? You go on Instagram just to follow certain ladies that are there showcasing their bodies and, and, and all these different things and that are shaking and twerking. And then when you leave, you log out so that your wife will not know. Some of you, the ladies as well, you go there to watch certain actors that you look like and you last over their page and whatever it is that they are doing on their page. And you begin to have certain thoughts that are immoral and demonic. That is a covenant. When you press follow to follow those ladies, when you press follow to follow whomsoever you are following online, you are entering into an agreement. The day, for instance, that you followed me here, you enter into an agreement with me that we are going to both together study the word of God to find our self-approved. Whatever agenda is in this channel, you enter into an agreement that you, you are okay with the preaching here, you are okay with the impartation here, and you want to be here to be fed the word of God. It was established a, a covenant between us here, not only with me, but with the other saints that come and join every day. Same thing when you join these apps. You enter into an agreement with the person that you are meeting online, but you also enter into an agreement with the people who designed the app and with whom that owns the app, which is the devil. And the CEO that the devil placed in, in that company to supervise over the agreement or over the app. You've entered into different multiple agreements. Oh, yes. 
And that is why, because you are constantly establishing agreements with the devil. That is why you, in the natural world, you are always in agreements of debt. You owe the bank. You owe the credit card. You owe this. You owe that. You owe that. But you don't understand that because you have entered into an agreement with Lucifer. He will put you in debt. He will make sure you don't have the good health for you to go and pursue your, your, your dreams, for you to go and earn a living. He will make sure you keep you oppressed. Because why? You hand over the command, the control, the authority, everything over your life to the devil. Same thing here as the Israelites. They were punished by God, went into exile because they did what? They rebelled against God. They forgot about the covenant that God had with them. And when God delivered the Israelites from Egypt, he strictly said to them, you can only marry an Israelite woman. Same thing for us today. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you gave his life to him, you enter into an agreement that you will not associate, communicate, engage in, into any extra change marriage friendship covenant whatever it is with anyone unless they are born again oh yes how can you have a friend and your friend he, he, he worships a certain deity when they are worshiping that deity because you are their friend they will bring your name and begin to pray to that deity for you and now you have entered into an agreement with a, 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 an idol same thing with you engaging in multiple online covenants with people and you don't understand they don't worship your god they don't rever him they don't get they are idolaters they worship some of them even worship the devil and they won't even hide it and you don't understand that by you following them by you sending them money sending them gifts or whatever it is you are entering into an, an agreement and that is how people backslide from the faith that is how you begin to your mind begins to be programmed to be evil because you are now covenanted to something else that is not god therefore you are in idolatry against god and the bible tells us that god sees that as committing adultery against him why was the bible forbidding the israelites from marrying foreign wives and foreign husbands because why foreign wives and foreign husbands implied immediately that those people were covenanted to other gods to deities and god did not want israel to be tainted to be corrupted and to commit idolatry idolatry so one of the ways you can immediately jump into being an idolater is by means of association and and it's listen and it's not just a physical association it's online as well you are establishing agreements okay you don't go on the internet to do research you are not using the internet to do biblical research you are on the internet to establish agreements with other people, with companies, with things that belong to Satan, to his kingdom. Allow God to speak to you. Allow God to deal with you. He will show you. Say, Lord, show me all the demonic agreements I did online. Whether marriages, whether friendship, whatever it is that need to be broken. And God will. I remember in the 90s, me in my ignorance, I was only young. I was 18, maybe 18, 19. And there were um, what chat rooms. The internet was f fairly new at that time in terms of chat rooms and everything. But you could go into any chat room and begin to speak to people all over the world. And you will engage with conversation, you will make friends, and then you will have a time where you go to meet up a specific person that you like online and you will talk to them. But what you don't, what we didn't understand as because 17, 18, you are a child, what do you know? What in our ignorance we didn't understand is that we were establishing agreements because friendship is agreement. If that person on the other side is doing Ouija board, if the person on the other side is consulting witches and wizards and warlocks, if they're doing things that are against God and you are their friend, online and you receive advice from them that is impartation whenever you are receiving advice whenever you are receiving any sort of of, of imp is impartation is impartation you are being you are receive you are a recipient they are a recipient but you you too are a recipient 
But because God is not in a business, they, they will impact your life more than you will impact their life because, because they are truly demonic. They don't want your God. So you need to be careful. Very careful. That's why when you join certain social media platforms, they ask you, do you know this person that you are adding onto your page? Do you know that, for instance, the social platform with the F, the F social media platform, the F book, it is not meant for you to add people that you don't know. They tell you specifically, they only add people that you know. But you, you have 2,000, 3,000 people that you have added. So you made an agreement with them. You are in covenant with them. That's why when they post filth, it comes to your feed. When they post corn, it comes to your feed. And you keep receiving, receiving, receiving. Impartation every day through your feed. Impartation. And you don't unfollow them. You don't unsubscribe for them. And the filthy they get, the more immoral they get, the more diabolical they get. You as well have been polluted, tainted, and becoming more and more an abomination. Then you wonder why you cannot move forward. You wonder why when you pray, God is, is not answering your prayer. You wonder why things are slowing down for you. Things are not happening for you. And this goes for, for physical friends as well. But today we are dealing with online. Because we all know about physical friends. We all know. Come on. But some of us, because we know God as a standard, we think that, oh, it's only bad when it, that person is a friend and comes to my house and has lunch with me. But if I'm online with them, it's okay. It's fine. You don't understand that there are, that there are certain people that you shouldn't even have their number on your phone. You shouldn't allow them to speak to you because you know that when they speak to you is to impart things in your life, but you are not going to be able to do the same because the minute you begin to talk about God, they will close the, yeah, Baba, I have to go. But next day they are sending you corn to your phone. And when you want to talk about God, oh, Baba, I got to go. But next day they are sending you more and more and more. Who, who is influencing who? And some of you, because you care so much about those that you call your friends, their opinion, what they're going to think of you. You don't say anything that, hey, my God does not allow, allow this kind of exchange. I cannot be involved in such activities. And you keep quiet because for you, it is more important what your friends think of you. And it's more important that you are in fellowship with them than being in fellowship with God. The Bible tells in the verse, in verse 16, the exiles did what had been proposed. Ezra, the priest, selected men who were family leaders, all identified by name to represent the ancestral houses. They covenant on the first day of the 10th month to investigate the matter. And by the first day of the first month, they had dealt with all the men who had married foreign women. Today, God has sent me here to investigate the matter, to break it down to you. So that you will know that if you are in any marriage with any foreign women or foreign men, it's an idolatry to God. Just because everybody else is sending nukes doesn't mean that you need to be sending new nukes. Just because somebody else is sending you as well, they erected this and erected and opened this and opened that. That doesn't mean that you should receive it. When you receive, you look at it and you don't send it back to sender by fire. You have now established a covenant. Because remember what <laughs> Noah did to his son that saw his nakedness. He cursed his son, didn't he? Because you are not supposed to see somebody else's nakedness on, on, unless you are married to them. Unless you are in what? In covenant. So by you looking at someone else's nakedness, you are entering into covenant. That's why when witches and wizards and warlocks, they want to curse somebody, they will strip naked. Some of you that are here, a wizard in your family, a, 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 a witch, when you were young, they strip off their clothes and allow you to see all their nakedness. That is a curse. That is for, for, it, for, for it to never be well with you, for you to suffer all your life. They cursed you with their nakedness. 
And some of you, you are walking the land of the living, but you are accursed. That's why nothing goes well. You pray God doesn't answer. You pray you cannot feel the anointing. You pray you cannot feel the presence of God. And the more you pray, the further you further and further you feel that you are away from God. And now you are beginning to blame God. God loves other people, but God doesn't love me. God gives us all equal opportunities. God gives us all equal opportunities. But because... The online thing is, is not as visible as because when you are sending it online, there is that privacy, that ability that you can hide your sin. You are thinking that it's okay. At least my wife, my husband don't know. Or at least my fiance, my family members don't know. It doesn't matter. God that sees you. God that sees you. Any per child that has been abused is under a curse and that child needs to be delivered. Because the adult who did that to the child placed the child under a curse. And once the child confesses and tells that this happens to them, it is the obligation of the parents or the take, take carers, caretakers to take them to the altar of God to be prayed, to be delivered. Because they were a recipient of a curse. And let me tell you something. Some of you that were abused, it was a demonic initiation. Then the reason why your family members did nothing because they were trying to initiate you into the demonic. They were trying to pass on some demons to you. That's why when we see with famous entertainers, they have to go and be allowed to be abused by a higher entertainer because this impartation. That is how demons are passed. And families that are high in witchcraft, they, they, they will even talk to an uncle or, or a cousin to do it so that because they want you to be initiated into the demonic. But if God loves you, you were quite never able to operate in witchcraft. And it, it, it failed because God had already chosen you to be a vessel for him. So even though they tried to initiate you into the demonic, it did not happen because you are a chosen. But God can deliver you. It was not your fault. You say, God, it wasn't my fault. I didn't ask this to happen to me. Deliver me, Jehovah. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Begin to make a firm commitment with God. Begin to worship him. Begin to serve him with all your heart, your soul, and your spirit. And the curse will be broken. The demonic initiation will be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. You break it. Don't have, you know what pastors want to uh, you believe? That you have no power. You need somebody ahead of you to break it. It's you that need to break the agreement. We can pray for you and stand in agreement. But at the end of the day, you need to confess it with your own mouth. Lord, this was done against me. I was abused because they were trying to initiate me or doing something against me that I did not approve of. I was a child. I was innocent and I didn't have the power to defend myself. But today, as I have knowledge, as I have understanding of your word and your plans for me, and as I have accepted you as my Lord and Savior, I break the ag demonic agreement. I sever the agreement with them and I break the curse in the mighty name of Jesus and I place myself under the blood of Jesus so that your blood will speak of my freedom, freedom, my atonement and my liberty in Christ. And it is done. Don't need no big man to come and slap you left, right and center with oil and shake you and then tell your business to the entire congregation so that people will begin to talk about you. Now you have no, you have no pr privacy concern in your situation because there are, there are churches like that that the pastor brings you with a big microphone, the microphone bigger than him and he's there interviewing you and you are having there to explain things that are painful, things that are not nice. So that he can show that he's a powerful someone, man of God. Look at the people. I'm delivering them when it's God that delivers people. But that is another conversation for another day. I'm here to tell you repent. You see the solar eclipse that is coming. God is warning the time. Remember when I said the other day, the clock of salvation is ticking. Time is running out for all of us. Imagine if God comes back. To rapture his church and you because of your many applications online, your many apps, your many DMs, your many agreements online and not some of you are not even online. You do have somebody on the side. You send them money. You support them. Repent. 
Tomorrow has not been promised to any of us. And let me tell you something. Appreciate those man and woman of God. They are coming to tell you the truth. Without any compromise. They are coming to tell you as it is. Because it's very rare now that you will find somebody that will tell you the truth. The devil has sent a lot of so-called man of God and women of God to lie to you, to make, make everything comfortable for you to sin. Make you comfortable in your mess. That see you that you are there in your doo-doo. You are there in your vomit. You are there in your filth. But like they let you, they, they just make it comfortable. They funny the smell so that, and, and, and that they chase away the, the flies so that you will be comfortable in your doo-doo. You will be comfortable in your vomit and in, in your mess. That is all they do. Don't listen before Jesus went, the disciples went over to Jesus and they asked him, so what will be the signs of your second coming? Jesus didn't leave anyone into the dark. He says, look at you, you know, when it's, when it's gonna, when it's gonna rain, you can distinct this, you can, you can tell the time that is about to rain or the rain is about to come or is about, is about to be sunshine. But you yourself don't know how to discern the times. And Jesus told us to look at the skies. Did he not say that? Watch the signs in the skies. Jesus said that. Did he not say, let me find the scripture. Because I don't like to, to lie, you know. I like to bring scripture. I'm looking for the scripture, saints. Be patient. Be patient. As the Lord lead, leads me, I'll bring you the scripture. Jesus told us to observe the signs in the sky. Luke 21, from verse 25 to 33, about this solar eclipse. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. And in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Come on now, somebody. Has it not happened? Man's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall see the son of man. Okay, but see the signs that Jesus is telling you to look for. It's all in the skies. Look. Some people are going at night with binoculars and they are seeing things happening in the sky. They can't, they don't have the, 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 the capacity to understand. But the, the Bible, Jesus says, with perplexity. Look at the things that will make you perplex. And there shall be signs in the sun. Is it not the solar eclipse? The sun will leave you for, for, for how many days? For four days, isn't it? The sun will just abandon you. I'm gone. Isn't that what Jesus was talking about in the book of Luke chapter 21? You can go and read from verse 25 to 33. You that need more proof. Is here the proof. Jesus said. So you that are, you are still committing adultery. You that are still keeping those people online. Sending you this and sending you that and you are sending. And you think that, hey, I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. Let me tell you something. This, the time is running out for all of us. We need to repent. By you going on those only, oh, uh, 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 on something offense, by you going on offense, having subscriptions there where you are paying a certain woman to do certain things, you have a subscription there, you are in an agreement that needs to be broken. And if God, Jesus comes back and you have that in your phone, you have that in your laptop and God knows where else, you are not going anywhere. Is here you are staying with Satan, the devil, your God. I'm telling you the truth. And it, it, some of these people is you that talk about men of God. Oh, look at these people. Eh, they're hypocrites. You have not, you, uh, you have not assessed all the men and women of God in the world to tell us that we are all hypocrites. Some of us are not. Some of us are, but you are all putting us, you putting the people of God all in the same basket. Because you are failing to do what God has commissioned you to do. You want to put all the preachers all the women of god and men of god in the same category as hypocrites have you roamed around the world to see every one of the saints and evaluate them and assess them in their holiness you haven't 
You probably all those that you call man of God and woman of God are not even woman of God and because the devil keeps you away from true preaching. That's why when you see a woman of God preaching or man of God preaching the true gospel, you say, hey, another false prophet and wants my money. You keep scrolling and you keep missing a divine encounter with God to repent. To repent. And you have to see where are you investing your time, your energy, your resources. Mm -hmm. Some of you, you spend all your strength to watch such films. Till the point that when is when you cannot watch it anymore, that you go to bed. You don't even care to pray, to be thankful for your life. You are given all your strength to sin. When you engage in activities with these ladies and these gentlemen, you give all your strength, all your body, all your heart, all your soul, all your spirits, everything that you have. And you don't stop it there. You give your time, time that you could be spending in prayer and seeking the face of God. You are spending with them and you don't even stop there. You're spending your resources, your money, the sweat of your brow. The devil has all your heart, your soul, your spirit, and he has your finances. He has your house because you are sinning in that house. He owns your laptop, owns your phones, owns all your, your devices. I don't care how are you doing it. Some of you are, oh, but Sister Dalila just listened to a little bit of music and, and um, you've, you, you buy, you bought the music and you know that that music is not of God. You have an agreement with that singer that needs to be broken. So if they have a demonic altar in which they consecrate the music to, if they have consecrated the music to the devil, you they have consecrated you the consumer as well onto their deities, onto their demons, onto the devil himself. In order for God to forgive the Israelites, in order for God to allow the Israelites to occupy Jerusalem once again because they were put in exile for idolatry. They had to make things right with God. And God sent Ezra to tell them, you are going to have to get rid of these foreign wives. And it wasn't easy for the Israelites. They've been married to these women. They had children with them. But God told them to leave them, abandon them. The leftists today would read the description and say, this is rubbish. This is nonsense. How can you do that? To... But our God is not, is not a politically correct God. It's either you are going to abandon, desist of such practices, or God will not receive you. It's as simple as that. That gospel that is going on around, that come as you are, Come as you are, yes, but you are not to stay as you are. Because everyone that had an encounter with God, they came with their sin. They came with their baggage. They came with their load. But guess what? They left delivered. Oh, yes. That adulterous woman, she was before God as an adulterous woman, but she didn't leave as an adulterous woman. She left as a forgiven woman, a woman that was forgiven by God, and she didn't leave as an adulteress. She left as with a second chance to life of righteousness. She left righteous. She came in adult. She was seen in adultery in a mess, but God forgave her. And when God forgives you, He's giving you back your life that the devil had taken. This is how wonderful Jesus is. When you give back, when you surrender your life to Christ, you ask him for forgiveness, you abandon your sin, you abandon your idolatry, you abind, abandon your adultery against God. God will go and snatch from the hands of Satan your very life, your destiny, and will give it back to you. You are no longer a slave to adultery anymore. Because you had an encounter with Jesus. You are not a slave to vices. You are not a slave to any app. You are not a slave to any subscription. You are not a slave to any games. You are not a slave to any, any soap opera, any movie, any program. God gives you your life back. And when he gives you back, that life is filled with purpose, with destiny. 
That is how wonderful God is. When you give him his, your body to him, you give him back your body, he gives you back a new body. You will begin to feel healthier, stronger, more powerful. Certain diseases will just go because why you gave it to him. And when you give something to God, he does what? He makes it fruitful and multiply. When you give God your heart, your soul, and your spirit, he will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He will give you back a heart of flesh, a heart that is glad, is filled with praise, a heart that cannot be depressed. When you give God your finances, God brings about multiplication. God rebukes the devourer. God begins to show you opportunities to make money that you didn't know before because you are a slave and the devil is not going to disclose anything to you for you to be better. God is going to begin to direct you. Now go and apply this with your CV. Now go and send that document. Now go and call this person. He's going to also send your destiny helpers because why? You gave to him your heart, your soul, your spirit, your thoughts. You gave him your time. You gave him your resources. You gave him your finances. You gave him everything, including including some of you, you gave your children as well. You gave your marriage, you gave your job, you gave everything. You say, God, I own nothing. I came with nothing. I own nothing. It is yours. My mobile phone is yours. So you make sure that bill from that mobile phone is paid at time. Lord, this house is a constant altar to you. He will make sure the rent is paid on time. Lord, my children belong to you. They are not mine. God will make sure that at school they prosper. They go ahead. Oh God, oh God, my finances do not belong to me. They are in your hands. I'm a faithful tither and giver. God is going to make sure you never lack. God is never going to make sure you never go and borrow from nobody. Some people that earn more than you are in debt, borrowing out there, doing the most. But you, God, will supply. God will just going to make a way. Without you knowing it's the first day of the month and the finances are there available for you to pay your bills when you pray to God doors open because every you everything that you are that you have it's in his hands Lord God, this marriage is not mine. This marriage is consecrated to you so that you will manifest your glory in this marriage. So therefore you don't argue with your husband. There is no punch up in your house. There is no domestic abuse. There is peace in that marriage because you consecrated it to God. Lord, this job does not belong to me. You gave me this job and I'm using this job to serve you. I'm here, Father Lord, to give a good account of who you are, to be a witness. Therefore, you get pro God will make sure you are promoted in that job. God will make sure that no one touches you. God will make sure that whatever it is that people try to do against you, it will never prosper. Because why? You consecrated it to God. You consecrated your, your body to God. God, my body is your temple. I will not put anything in my body that will corrupt the temple of the Holy Spirit, that will corrupt your, 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 your temple. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to entertain any addictions. That's why when people look at you, you are in your 40s, you are in your 30s, and people could swear you are in your late teens. You have a full set of teeth. You still have your hair. You are young. No wrinkle upon your face because God is keeping you. Because you consecrated to him. And everything that we give to God, it only gets better. And you know what? It gets better, even better with time. Because God will perfect that that is already started in you. He will perfect that that concerns him, which is you, your life. Let us go to an, a prayer in Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah was a, a prophet was a cup bearer, but was a man that God had given him the mantle to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Him and Nehemiah were from the from contemporaries. Okay? They were walking together to rebuild Jerusalem. Nehemiah was in charge of the building itself. Okay? Of, of, the, of the city of Jerusalem. While Ezra was in charge of the spiritual condition of the Israelites. He was dealing with the sins of the Israelites, but Nehemiah had been given a mandate to rebuild the walls. And, let, and, and he had a prayer. That I advise you all to take note of this scripture because you can pray this prayer as well in your own time at home. 
Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah's prayer. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came to Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. This Jewish remnant that had survived the exile was the people to whom Ezra was ministering unto. To tell them about their sins because God did not want the Israelites to return back to their exile because of their disobedience. God was dealing with the root, the cause of the exile. Every time you hear that, that, that the Israelites were in exile, it is because they had rebelled against God. And because God is a loving God, he did not want them to return to their vomit, to go back to exile because of idolatry. So he sent Ezra to tell them exactly what was wrong with them. What, what kind of sin was so grave that they, have committed, they had committed against God that they needed to put things right and repent? They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province and are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. So that was the condition of the people, of the, the ones that had returned to exile. So they were in exile, but their city was destroyed. They had nothing to go back to, but they had to go back to that nothingness. But because we serve a living God, he's faithful. He was giving the Israelites here another chance and he's giving you another chance. You have nothing. You are like Jerusalem at these times, burned with fire, broken down. Gates been broke, burned with fire. You are in trouble because of your idolatry, because of your sin, because of these demonic things that you are doing online and even in the physical, some of you. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, you that are in this sin, pray this prayer. Begin to fast, begin to pray and pray this prayer saying, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, you who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer. Your servant is praying before you day and night. For your servants, the people of Israel, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. This is a wonderful prayer because when we pray for our ancestors, you are counted before God, your, the sins of your ancestors. God is going to count you as one that has committed the sin as well. That's why Nehemiah was repenting on behalf of the Israelites, his ancestors, and he himself. Without Nehemiah was not under this sin, but because God will visit up to the fifth generation of those who offended him, Nehemiah was praying. He was not hiding from the face of God. Some of you, oh, but it's my mother that is doing. I did it in the past. I don't think I need to repent. This is how you repent. We are giving guidelines here by Nehemiah, the servant of the Most High God. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. So Nehemiah is taking full ownership for the sins of Israel himself and his family you see how wonderful it is we have acted very wickedly towards you we have not obeyed the commands decrees and laws you gave your servant moses you here that are sinning against god with immorality remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if you exiled people are at the far furthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. So it doesn't matter how far gone you are in your sin. It doesn't matter how further you are from God, you and your family. God has the power because you've repented to bring you back. Not only to his presence, but to your promised land, to your destiny, to where you should be in order to fulfill your purpose here in the land of the living in Jesus' name. 
They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. I'm talking about you that you are the people of God. There was once a time that God redeemed you because you confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You gave your life to him and he forgave your sin. You used to have a relationship with God. You used to walk upright before the Lord, but you fell into sin. But because God still honors that day that you made a covenant with him, he has sent me here to preach the word to you, to tell you that, hey, you are not too far gone. Come to me. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. So God, the last part is Nehemiah praying for the king to give him favor as well. So that is how we should, we should go. To pray. Okay? I don't know how far you have gone and how far you are from the Lord. But you are never too far for his blood not to redeem you. Your sin, if you confess it to God, is faithful enough to forgive you and to restore you. How many of you here would like to take this opportunity to repent? Sister Dalila, I'm going to delete all these apps. I'm going to delete all these games. I'm going to spend more time in your presence. I'm going to monitor how much time I spend with foolishness in my life. I want to have a stronger bond with God. I'm tired of leaving God for as a second option in my life, third, fourth, whatever it is. I only pray at night before going to bed. But during the day, I don't pray because I don't see the need. I'm always busy. I'm watching something. I'm always playing. I'm always at school. So, Lord, I, I, I see where I have neglected my walk with you. I don't spend more time with you. I spend more time with my friends. I spend more time in these apps doing wickedness. But today, Lord, I want to delete them. I'm repenting. I'm going to call the people who I have sent these naked pictures and I'm going to tell them that from henceforth, I will never do it again. I am a new creation. I'm going back to my God today. I'm going to unsubscribe from certain online WhatsApp groups that are teaching me to be perverse, sending me jokes that are so degrading to women and men that are so diabolical and nasty and filthy. I'm going to exit those groups today i'm gonna end my subscription with a certain platform that allows me to see wicked films filthy films i'm gonna get rid of every sensual toy i bought for self-pleasuring i'm gonna get every wickedness every video that i have in my phone every music every everything that is wicked and filthy today i'm giving my life to the lord I make a vow today, Lord, I'm not going back to my vomit. I'm, I'm always scrolling, Lord God. Sometimes I scroll. I can be scrolling for an entire hour, two hours, watching videos. But when it's time to pray, I'm tired. I'm worn out because I spend all my energy. I spend all my effort with things that are evil, things that are irrelevant. I don't know what is your sin. But repent today, come to Jesus. Ask God to be with you during this solar eclipse. If the Lord is to come back within these three days of darkness, that you will not be left behind when the trumpet sounds, that we all will be ready, including family members. Some of you here, how are your family members? Fair, how are they going to fear God? When they know that you yourself, you don't fear God. Your religion is, is just on Sunday when you go to church. It's only your son, on Sunday that you listen to some gospel music on your way to church. It's only on Sunday that, that you pray and read the word of God. But the rest of the week, you are watching soap operas, films, sending demonic messages. Watching corn. Doing everything that is wicked and evil. 
And then when you feel bad about it on Sunday, you repent to begin to do it all over again on Monday. Repent. For the day of the Lord is at hand. Oh, but Sister Dalila, don't do anything wrong. That is not for you to decide. Ask the Holy Spirit to search. If you are a person that you are always coveting everything that is out there, you spend your time consuming yourself with, I should have this, I should have that. You are allowing your mind to be occupied with the things of this world. We all of us have something to repent. Even when you think it's okay, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Ask the Holy Spirit now. Holy Spirit, you have dealt with everybody's sin. What about my own sin? What is it that I'm doing, Lord, that you are displeased with me? What is it that I'm doing that if the trumpet was to sound today and you were to come to judge the living and the dead, I would have been left behind to perish with the, with the enemy? It's not about what you think, you know. It's about what God thinks. It's not about what you think. It's about what God thinks. What you think is irrelevant, what I think is irrelevant, what other things other people think is even more irrelevant. But what is certainly relevant is how God sees you and what it is that is not happy with you and me. Let the Holy Spirit search. Precious saints, let us pray. And as we pray, we are going to also pray to consecrate this month of April before the Lord. It is important that we consecrate the month unto the Lord that we are praying actively to consecrate everything to God. All right, saints. Let us pray. Almighty God, King of glory. We thank you, Father Lord, for this title today, for this ministration, Breaking Online Demonic Marriages and Agreements, slash agreements as well. Father Lord, as you have spoken to us today and you have taught us, Father Lord, the ways of your righteousness and what you need from us today, Lord God. Father Lord, some of us here with the Holy Spirit has taken us on a journey of repentance. We are already thinking about things that we did, we said, that we thought, Lord God, that are evil, diabolical, and demonic, Lord God. And Father Lord, we ask you for your forgiveness. Forgive us, Father Lord, from all our unrighteousness. Allow the blood of your Son, Yeshua, to cleanse us from all iniquity, not only ourselves, our parents and our forefathers up to 50 generations before us that established demonic marriages, agreements with demonic and satanic altars, with people that were idolaters and demonic, and that is affecting us today, Lord God, and is not allowing us to be totally free in your Christ, to live an abundant life, a holy life, a righteous life. Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting Father, as we are gathered here, Lord God, we are not hiding from you our sins. We're not hiding any of our iniquities. Father Lord, but rather we are exposing everything to you, Father Lord. We are opening our hearts, our souls, and our spirits to fully repent. And as we repent, Lord God, we confess that we have sinned against you. That we've, we've committed abominations against you. We've entered into demonic online agreements. Even we repent on behalf of our children, Father Lord. In these different online platforms for games for children, Lord God. As we repent, Almighty God. I pray that you will break and destroy every demonic agreement we have established online. By adding friends that are your enemies. That by engaging in activities that are filthy, demonic, and immoral. Lord God, we repent, we repent and we break the agreements. And as we break the agreements, we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And from henceforth, we are in a new covenant. We are in a new agreement with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Therefore, the blood of Jesus shall speak of our freedom, of our atonement. And Father, Lord, we worship you and we honor you because you are a God of second chance. 
You'll never abandon us, Father, and you will never leave us in darkness, and you know, never allow us to perish without knowing why, Lord God. So today, Lord God, we embrace you. We honor you. We glorify your name, Lord God, and we rededicate our lives to you. We dedicate our children, dedicate our marriages, our homes, businesses, ministries, jobs, careers, education. And it is all yours, Lord God, our, our mobile phones, Lord God, our gadgets. Everything that we have, it is not ours anymore. It belongs to you. We give it back to you so that, Father, you will do that that is pleasing in our lives, Lord God. You will do that what you want with us, Lord God. We're no longer in authority. You are in complete authority, Lord God. You are in charge, Lord God. And Father, Lord, we thank you for this new month of April that you have given us. We decree that things shall not be difficult for us this month of April in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree that we shall not struggle for help this month of April in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree that we shall be a candidate of all round help this month of April in the mighty name of Jesus. Angels like men, men like angels, where are you? Locate us for dumbfounding help this month of April in Jesus mighty name. Because the Bible says that people, because of their hospitality, they even entertain angels without knowing. And we know that Father Abraham received the answer to his prayer concerning the conception of Isaac by two angels that came to visit him. Wind of sleeping and slumbering in prayers assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidate. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of errors and mistakes. Assigned to this month of April, our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of laziness and procrastination. Assigned for this month of April, our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of accident and calamity. Assigned to this month of April, our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of backsliding, assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of disappointment, assigned to this month of April. Our lives and your families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of death, assigned to this month. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in Jesus' mighty name. Wind of sickness and infirmity assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in Jesus' mighty name. Wind of, wind of shame and disgrace assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of pain and sorrow assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of begging and borrowing assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your send in Jesus' mighty name. Wind of hardship assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you wind of hatred and rejection assigned to this month of month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Wind of disfavor assigned to this month of April. Our lives and families are not your candidates. Go back to your senders in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, we consecrate this month of April into your hands. We ask you that your will will prevail and not the will of the enemy. We soak this, this month of April with the precious blood of Jesus. We speak unto this month of April. April, you shall not castigate us this month. April, you shall not deny us of our inheritance. April, you shall be a month of miracles, signs and wonders and many breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus. April, you shall be a month of, of, of miracles. April, you shall be a month of open doors and divine opportunities for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we sow into this month of April health and prosperity and advancement, Lord God, and we shall receive that that we have sown into the month of April in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I receive today victory for this month of April for all of us, Lord God, and our family members.
This month of April is washed and cleansed and sanctified and purified by the blood of Jesus. And this month of April shall only obey to the Lord God of Israel concerning our lives. This month of April shall only cooperate with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. This month of April refuse to cooperate with witches and wizards and warlocks against us in the mighty name of Jesus. This month of April refuse to cooperate with our enemies and grant us the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we have prayed, we believe that there is none like you. And whatever it is that we have agreed, Lord God, it is signed, sealed, and delivered because you gave the church a mandate. Whatever two or more agree in my name, oh yes, whatever we bind on earth is loose in heaven. So therefore we have agreed. So it is established by faith in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. There is a lady here, your husband has a friend. And this friend has been making advances at you, but you have not told your husband. What are you waiting for? The Lord is saying this is wrong. You have to report to your husband what his so-called friend is saying and doing. You feel bad for your husband because you are afraid that if you tell him, he's going to be very broken hearted. But you have to tell, tell him the truth. Because if he finds out from another source, you're going to be in trouble. And it will be your fault. Write capital me. Write capital me very quickly. Your husband has a friend and this friend has been making advances at you. And you have not yet shared this information with your husband. And God is telling you that you need to tell the truth. Because if he finds it from another source, it will not be well with you. It will be treason. And will indicate that perhaps you are, are interested. Write capital me. Write capital me very quickly. No one is here to, to judge you. To expose you. It is just simply God is giving you a warning. Okay? It's time for you to do what is right. Write capital me you are here. And your husband's friend has been making some advancements, sending messages and things of that sort. You have to disclose that to your husband. You have to tell your significant half. Write capital me very quickly so that we can move on. Don't let God wait. This is an opportunity that God is giving you to make things right. Don't allow me to stay here. Focus on your issue because you won't identify. Just write capital me and identify yourself. Do the right thing because I see that if you don't do it, you're going to be in trouble in that marriage. Okay? So today you need to do this today. You have to go to your husband and tell him the truth. It is not your fault. All right? But if you hide it, it, it will look like you have some sort of interest in this person. Even if you don't. But do the right thing. Write capital me. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to expose you. Write capital me so that you are in agreement that you're going to do the right thing. Write capital me very quickly. Your husband's friend is sending you some messages that are not right. Making some advancements. <laughs> Making some advances at you. Write capital me. Write capital me very quickly. You have to tell your significant other half that this is wrong. Okay? Tell the truth that this is what is going on. And it shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. The person has identified. Hallelujah. And if you are a man, you are in the same situation as well. Identify. Set yourself free and tell the truth. The truth is the truth. Write capital me as well. Don't leave this live stream doing wrong. Okay? Live here liberated by the spirit of the living God. Live this live stream filled with the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. There is a person here you are in trouble because you are about to start your job tomorrow to go back to work. But you don't even have money to take an Uber. Your account is completely de depleted. You are resuming back to work tomorrow and you don't even have 
a cent in your account. But the Lord that sees you, the God that sees you, Jehovah Elroy, that sees you in that condition wants to bless you today. You are not going to stay at home and call off sick because you don't have the money to go back. God is going to take care of you, but you need to write capital me. Receive it, Sister Luz. And come back and testify of what the Lord has done for you. Okay? You will go back to work tomorrow. It's supernatural money. I speak it over your life. You will have more than enough, not only to go back to work, but to pay for whatever it is that you need to pay. Groceries, whatever it is. God, Jehovah Jireh, is providing, including you, lover girl. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Some of you need to repent from your names that you use online. Some of you use filthy names online. You're going to have to delete those names because those are agreement with evil spirits. Some of you, you have names in online, snake this, snake that, goddess. And you don't understand that those are agreements. Repent, write capital me to repent. Say, Lord, I repent from those demonic names I gave myself online that is allowing me to, that is making me identify to demons. I repent. I'm going to delete them. I'm going to start all, all afresh in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of glory. If you call yourself snake python, a serpentine spirit will take over your body. If you identify yourself, uh, for instance, some people have this um, name that identify themselves as wicked this and wicked that. Oh, yes. Repent. You that have posters in your homes of um, manga characters. There is a person here. You are a fan of manga cartoons. And your house, your room has a lot of these manga uh, characters you have them as posters repent cap right capital me repent these are all demonic characters that have the face of that of that character but it's a face that the demon has so that you begin to love the character your brother tell him to repent okay sister felibel god knows that you are here and he's interested in the salvation of your family as well tell him I'm going to post this live stream later. And you can say, Sister Dalila, I take ownership what God has sent me to say. Tell Sister Dalila is saying to you in Jesus' name. Repent. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Jesus. There is somebody here. You are a mother and you have not been allowed to see your child by the Father. The Father is making it impossible for you to see that child. Sometimes they're telling you they've gone on holidays, they won't be around. Sometimes they tell you, oh, you have to come only on this day and you can't because you at work, but you have noticed that the father of that child that has the custody is making it difficult for you to see that child and is breaking your heart. And you are here on this live stream, right? Capital me, God sees your crying. God sees your sadness. You are no longer going to be barred from seeing your child. God is making a way for you. In fact, I see that you have asked the Lord to allow you to have the custody of your child. Because the reason why your child is with the father is because at the time, the father had more means. But today you have just as comfortable, you are as you are more comfortable now that you were before. You could technically now take your child back. But you're trying to be civil and cordial. You don't want to traumatize your child. But God that sees your tears, God that sees you crying and your prayer is here to give answer. Right, capital me. Right, capital me. Very quickly. You that your child is with the, the, the father. The father has custody but is making you difficult for you to see that child. And you are praying for God to help you. Right, capital me very quickly. Don't let God wait. Just write immediately. Or perhaps you are somebody here that a family member is in that same situation. Receive it for them. They've been praying and because God knows that you come here, he is speaking. Or if that is you, identify, write capital me very quickly. You have a child and the child is in the custody of the father. 
but the father is making it impossible for you to see the child on a regular basis. He's coming up with different excuses. And you've been praying, asking God for a solution and help. Help is here, right, capital me. Do it very quickly. Don't be afraid. No one is here to report you or to slander you on any of it. This is just an opportunity for you to receive your breakthrough. You have been praying, so God has heard your prayer. You that, yes, receive it, Sister Brenda, okay? Receive it. Receive it. Not only that child is coming back home, but that problem is removed in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it, justice and joy in Jesus' mighty name is resolved. That is not a problem anymore. God has heard the crying and God shall provide a solution today. The solution is available. I see chains twins receive healing and stop calling yourself I see chain twins. You're not chained to anything. Hallelujah. Receive it, Sister Josephine, as I stand in agreement with you concerning that issue. And come back and testify that the Lord has done it for you. And I want to read to you a testimony. I received it a long ago, but because I've been busy, I forgot that I had, I was to release it to you, okay? All right. Hi, Sister Dalila, just want to give a testimony. Late last year, you prophesied about a lady whose son was in prison and was worried about the delay on him coming out. I identified and you told me not to worry, for God is still dealing with him. My son is out. Thank you. May God bless you abundantly. You see how it is important for people to identify and write capital me. This lady said she immediately identified. God has dealt with her son and her son is out of prison by the glory of God. God answers prayer. He cares. Only he cares. Even if you have a family that does not care. Family members, members that do not care. Sister Pamela said she remembers. Hallelujah. Even if you have friends that do not care, family members, brothers, siblings, God will always care about us. So today, I am inviting you all that are here and you have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Write capital me. Write capital me. Those of you that you have not accepted Jesus yet as Lord and Savior, this is an opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Sister Tamika, tap in. You are welcome, sister, into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Mar, you are welcome, beloved, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heaven rejoices. That means that the angels in heaven are shouting your name, jubilating, singing, dancing, having a party, a feast up there in heaven because a prodigal son and a prodigal daughter has just returned home to the bosom of Abba Yah, our Abba Father Yahweh in heaven in Yeshua's name. Anyone else you would like to accept Jesus today as Lord and Savior, don't allow this opportunity to pass you by. Join the last two sisters that have taken the leap of faith today to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. And don't leave the live stream without Jesus. Write capital me to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. There are people here that you would like to reconcile with God as well. One griefing, you are welcome, beloved. We welcome you, heaven rejoices, saints. Another third soul for Christ. I'm going to tell you what has just taken place in your life. Jesus has arose from his throne to delete your name from the book of hell and eternal damnation and to write your name, including you, Sister Helena and Charlex, and to write your name in the Lamb's book of life. That means that the day your life ends here in the land of the living, you will not perish but have everlasting life. 
God will receive you in his eternal glory. And if he's, he comes back to judge the living and the dead, you will be raptured into heaven with him. You will be raptured. You'll be caught up. You will be a rapture. You will be raptured unto heaven with God. Hallelujah. Ain't this so wonderful? Five souls for the kingdom of God. There are people here, if you would like to reconcile with God today, you used to be somebody that was on fire for God and something happened and you went back into the world to serve the devil and today you would like to come back to God. You would like to reconcile with God. You are sorry for breaking God's heart and today you want to renew your covenant with God. You can also write capital me to return to Jesus to renew your vow with God and to promise him that you are not going to leave him and abandon him again. You are going to remain steady fast. This time around, you are not joking. You, are, you mean business. You can equally write me. And those of you who need God to help you on your walk, as you are receiving today the gospel, you feel that there are errors in your life, that you are failing God that you are not living up to the standard, you are entertained by the things of this world. I pray for you that today you will receive a fresh anointing from God to live a life that is pleasing to Him. You will reject sin. You will be allergic to sin. The Holy Spirit, Sister Tatiana Holland, Sister L, welcome, welcome back, my sisters. Nick Noble, you are welcome, my precious brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Sister Brenda, you are welcome, my sister. Glory be to God. I pray that the Lord will strengthen you, that you will receive a new baptism of the Holy Spirit, including you, user A2, A20, and, and so on and so forth. That today, as you are here, asking God for strength, that he will strengthen you, including you, Sister Letty. That he will baptize you again with the Holy Spirit. He will put more fire into your prayer altar so that you will not... Be sleepy when it's time to pray. You will be strong and the Lord will reject sin. And do that that is good before God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Sister Guillermina, thank you very much for the liking and everything. My gra sister Guillermina. Are you Portuguese? Because my, gr my great, my grandmother's sister was Guillermina as well. And that is a Portuguese name. Unless I'm wrong. <laughs> Beloved saints, let me pray for you before you all leave the live stream so that the Lord will continue to bless you, that he will continue to keep you on fire from him because these are the last day saints. And I want to advise you to be prayerful now that this solar eclipse is about to happen, that you will pray that God will provide that during this eclipse he will keep you, he will strengthen you and I will be praying as well. Yes, it's the same, Sister Guilhermina. Falamos português todos. Obrigada pelos likes. Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting Father, I thank you, O oh Lord, for your presence today. I thank you for your servants that came. Father Lord, that as they are leaving to go about their business, Father Lord, that they will not live broken. They will not live, Father Lord, without your presence. Strengthen them, Lord God. Some of them are struggling with sin, struggling with adultery, struggling with all these things. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give them such an unction that they will never want to sin anymore and go back to their vomit. And as you sustain them, as you put fire in their prayer altars, Lord God, resurrect them in their altars of prayer, Lord God. Father, Lord, give them such an anointing that they won't want to go back to their vomit, to their sin, Almighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you that you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, let me tell you something. Don't go back to your vomit. Continue to worship God. Continue to serve God. Because if you are not watchful over your walk with Christ, you will slumber and you will go back to the devil. And ask the Lord to tell you where does he want you to be baptized in the water for him to order your steps so that you will not fall into sin. So that you will have a place. But if you are still figuring out things, I'm inviting you, or better, as a congregation, we are inviting you to join us Mondays to Saturdays from 1 to 2.30 p.m. United Kingdom hour, to be more precise, London hour, okay? Join us, precious saint. And 
I promise you every day we are all learning something new and we are getting closer to God. Yeah, I would like to invite you also to subscribe to our YouTube page in case you are not going to be able to come to the live stream. I understand during this solar eclipse as well. Some of you probably won't be able to come on the live stream to conserve the batteries on the phone for emergency purposes. Don't worry, saints. Everything is later on uploaded on YouTube. Okay? So for you to have access to our YouTube page, all you need to do is go to my bio. And by the time you get to my bio, you will see there on top the YouTube icon. Subscribe. Be a part of this family. You can also go to my bio and that will give you access to previous con other content on this page. And I'm sure you will be blessed. And God will continue to reveal himself to you. Um, I want to also remind you that our Holy Communion service and consecration service will be held from henceforth every Saturday, okay? So if you would like to have a Holy Communion and you would like to consecrate anything to God from anointing oil, holy water, children, career, papers, whatever it is, this will be held, this service will be held here, same time on Saturdays. So help us God and we are all alive. All right. I want to also, those of you that are new here, to be mindful of scammers that are creating fake profiles using my name, image and the content here to ask you for money in exchange for prayers and blessings. Kindly um, report and block such pages because they are fraudulent. I don't have an alternative page and I would never as a believer in Christ Contact you asking you for no money. If you would like to give for the furtherance of the gospel in this ministry, you can do so by accessing also my bio and there you will see the PayPal information relevant for sowing a seed. And if you sow a seed, God will reward you good measure, press it together, running over back into your bosom. It will make sure you never lack because he is your shepherd. So precious saints, Go in peace and um, I hope the announcements are all. I haven't forgotten anything. I'm going to pray now for the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry as we always do, saints. Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting Father, remember, O oh God, from your throne and arise for all the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry according to what you have promised them in Malachi 3.10. In Deuteronomy 28, and according to all the blessings of Abraham, and visit Father Lord from your holy throne, beloved sister Lori Nobos Gray, family members Anthony, Caden, Jacy, Nick, Daddy Leo, Laterica, Geraldine Collins, husband Alfonso, Roberta Davis, Joanna Victorino, Folly Budrix, Martha Sam, Brenda Pizarro, her son Kevin, Selena Bradley, Janet Thompson, Antoinette Fleming, Jay Tuekun, Tuana Watson. Jasmine Mitchell, Tyron Harris, Veronica Quayle, Terry White, Anissa Gale, Michelle Johnson, Karen Lewis, Natalie Rahel, Magdalene Kowalska, Byron Dumas, Marina Bonilla, Karenin Chambers, Kita Mila Cole, Jewel Sample, Rikita Walla, Parents Raymond Renova, Family Members Ken Keisha Kelvin, Kaylee Cameron, Leighton Preet, Lorian Baker, Andrew Apostolo, Dolores Edwards Harding, Elaine Todd, Julian Yoba, Janelle Grant, Rose Mbeba, Martha Sam, Ravina Collins, Jacqueline Bogle, Denise Marshall, Sheila Ray, Carolyn Wastnant, Titi Toure, daughter Abibatu, and parents Latosha Quentabam, Just King J, Junior Marshall, Leila Ibrahim, Chantel Small, chosen for such a time as this, Simone Morgan, Michelle Wallace, husband Wade, Antoinette Lewis, Natasha Fogel, children Jordan Jr., Mother, Mother Bini Benjamin, Asila Preston, Children Tristan and Ryan, Our Products, China Greenlee, Mama Hurley, Craig White, Lashonda Brown, Tarmisha Hayes, Tarmisha, Tamisha Brown, Tarmisha Hayes, Shimori Chanel, The Christian Women Fellowship, Denise Henry, Erin Jones, parent, uh, Erin Jones, Brenda and Elijah, Elizabeth Tadis, Sarah Oguto, Stacey Cunningham, Karen Lewis, Janelle Grant, Teresa Azinj, Denise Henry, Natalie Nyundu, husband Musa Ture, children Hussein and Hussein Ture, Kelvin Kalix, Angela Maria Stolda, 
Brenda Togo and her family, Mrs. Erin and her household, Percy Marshall, Jalisha Siemens, Patrice Batiste, Nisi B, Doris, Kasai Films, Shane Furtado, Kasai and Elani, Daniel Elang, Lasinga Holcrom, Toya Thorpe, Salmon Lures, Nyembezi Gululu, Tania Barush, Christopher Birch, Giovanni Holland, Keshni Kirsty, Rashon Stanley, Kechi Kamara, Kim Lehman, C. Michelle Johnson, Joyce, and Faras Bacchus. I'm a, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you arise today from your holy throne, Lord God. And remember the faithful tithes and givers of this ministry, Father Lord. According to your promises, Lord God, in Malachi 3.10, and according to the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28, Father Lord, I stand by the integrity of your word, that you are not a man that you should lie, or a son of man that you should turn away from your word and repent. Therefore, Father Lord, rebuke the devourer, the canker worm, the grasshopper, Father Lord, in your children's finances, right into their source of income, in their pockets, bank accounts, in their credit cards, bank cards, in their careers, ministries, businesses, in their children's education and in their own education if they are still going through it. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, render the heavenlies, Father Lord, fully open unto thy servants and shower upon each one of them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Father Lord, I speak from the corridors of power in the mighty name of Jesus. They are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations but borrow from none. They are like the power trees planted by the river banks they will never wither they will never dry oh yes lord god they shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season and when the enemies come against them one way they shall flee seven ways because that is the inheritance in you oh lord I speak over their lives again. They're like the house on the hill. Then they cannot be hidden. The gifts shall continuously make room for them and bring them before great men. Oh, Father Lord, I speak over their lives that whatever it is that they touch with the palm of their hands, oh, Lord God, shall always be fruitful and multiply. Father Lord, clothe their enemies with shame and disgrace. Open doors that no man can shut. Father Lord, allow them to wear a garment. Oh, Father Lord, of constant praise. Oh, Father Lord, grant them on favor. Let people go out of their way to bless them. Oh, Father Lord, grant them open doors, divine connections, elevation, promotion, Almighty God. Oh, Father Lord, I speak over their lives, success beyond measure. Oh, Father Lord, I speak over their lives, Lord God. They shall run, but never go, go weary. They shall soar like eagles, Lord God. You shall renew their strength, Father Lord. Almighty God, King of glory, I break every curse in their finances. I break every demonic and satanic curse in their bodies, in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every curse of delay, of reproach, of disgrace and shame. I break every curse, Father Lord, of improductivity, Lord God. I break every curse of unemployment in the mighty name of Jesus. I break any curse, Father Lord, of untimely death in the mighty name of Jesus for as far as the sun is from the earth. So shall poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach, delay, shame, disgrace and the plague be far away from thy servants in the mighty name of Jesus. As some of us are about to experience this eclipse, Lord God, I pray that you will keep thy servants, Lord God, under your wings, under your shadow, hidden from whatever it is that is about to come. Father Lord, I pray protect their homes against robbers against evil and wicked men. Father Lord, protect their children. I place them under the power, the authority of your sovereign blood, almighty God. Oh, Father Lord, I, I saturate their homes, the environments, their cars, and everything that they have with the precious blood of your son, Yeshua. I speak life, Father Lord, that even in this eclipse they will prosper. Even during this eclipse, they will never run, run out of any provision. Father Lord, as they have sown into your house, they will never lack, they will never beg. They will never go without. And those who need provision for this eclipse to come, provide for them. Father Lord, that their houses will be, Father Lord, their homes will be heavily guarded by armies of angels. Oh, Father Lord, keep them safe from harm. Keep their vehicles safe from harm. Father Lord, protect them. Father Lord, hide them. Father Lord, shield them. Father Lord, be their shield and their buckler, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we believe. Amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, she shall forever be well with you, both in the land of the living and in the afterlife. 
And as many are, are thinking of this eclipse as something that is going to put them in harm's way, perhaps some people are going to lose things. You are going to prosper with this eclipse. You are going to grow with it. This eclipse is coming to bless you because that is how we do. We navigate through everything under the blessing of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. No evil shall befall your dwelling as it is written in the Psalm 91. A thousand shall fall at your right side and, 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 and 10,000 at your, at your left, but it shall not come near you in the mighty name of Jesus you will overcome you will prosper you will go forward you will ex you will expand everything that you have will grow and multiply in the mighty name of Jesus I place you under the authority the power and the dominion and the sovereignty of the blood of Jesus and God willing I shall see you all tomorrow and remember you are more than a conqueror in Jesus name you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and if God is for you who can be against you Amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom.